Jane Levy, welcome to An Actor Despairs. How are you doing? I'm doing okay. Thank you for having me. Yeah, I'm, I'm a big fan of yours. I, I discovered you in uh, About Alex. You know, I really love that film. Uh, it's kind of, I had a friend who died, so I just really related to that. And then, you know, I went back and watched Evil Dead and everything, Suburgatory. And now you're doing, you know, this amazing show. There's always extraordinary playlists where you crush it in a very uh, high energy show that I can imagine stamina wise is, is hard to keep up every day. But uh, yeah, you're, you're, you're truly a great actress and it's such an honor to have you on. So thank you. It's very nice of you to say. I mean every word of it. But before we dig into the work, let's start from the beginning. You grew up in Northern California? Yeah, I grew up in Marin County, which is across the Golden Gate Bridge from San Francisco. Nice. Yeah. How was that experience? It's a really beautiful place. It's pretty idyllic. Um, forests, redwoods meets the ocean. It's like where a lot of organic farming oh, wow. started and exists. The food is delicious. Um, it's really nice weather. It's a great place to grow up. Family still there? My mom lives in Sonoma County, which is north of Marin, and my father lives in New York City. Um, but then I have a cousin in San Francisco. My brother lives in the East Bay. My aunt lives in West Marin. So yeah, when I go home, quote unquote, to visit family, most of the time it's to go up, back up Northern California. Oh, that's so beautiful. And I'm curious, you know, what, what did your parents do? How did the arts thing happen for you? My dad was a lawyer. Yeah. And he has that he has since then switched to mediation. And my mom was a stay at home mom. And she worked retail, mostly at like gardening stores. And now she has a flower company. She's a florist. My aunt has a flower farm in West Marin, Point Reyes Flowers. And my mom arranges the flowers and they have a stand at the farmer's market every Saturday. And it's, um, a pretty lovely way to live your life. That's amazing. And, and San Francisco has a pretty righteous theater scene, right? Like, were you ever going to plays as a kid there? No, I was in community theater in Marin, um, just in my small town of San Anselmo. Yeah. And I loved doing plays with my school and with the community, but I never... Um, did anything outside of my town didn't go to San Francisco or Berkeley or I you know I remember my mom doesn't remember this but one of my earliest memories was when I was in kindergarten or first grade I remember asking my mom to get me an agent this was even before I was in plays I, I did the same there. that's amazing I I had the exact same thing. Like, it's so easy for your parents to acquire that, you know? Yeah, but I was like, I think that, like, at a very young age, I think that I could do this thing. And my mom was like, what are you talking about? Like, yeah. <laughs> we live in Marin. We don't live in L.A. I'm not interested in, in pimping you out. Sorry to anyone who's a child actor. I no, it's all good. You had a good, you had a good mother. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, but yeah, I just, I, I was in like 10 plays as a kid. Wow. And was there, was there a teacher? Was there a mentor that really instilled in you to, to pursue this? No, actually my drama teacher in high school and I didn't get along. I got a 3.86 GPA and the one B I got was in drama. Oh man, what a dick! <laughs> fuck, fuck, is that a guy or girl? A guy. Fuck that guy. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> I said it, not you. But uh, I'm curious then, how, how do you stay buoyed then when you kind of like, you know, because I, I had a talk with Sheila Band about this yesterday. You know, these young teachers, they have such a, a big part of our lives and shaping us. And, you know, when you have a, someone who's not really being a positive reinforcement in your life, how did you still, you know, not, not, I mean, despair? How did you not cave to despair? Well, when I was a kid and into my teenage years, I, 
again, I was never really thinking about acting as a career. I just did it because I liked it and I felt like I was good at it. But I also was really into sports and yeah. soccer, I both, right? Yeah, I played soccer. And so my mentors were always more in the sports world, like my trainer or my soccer coach. And I've always, from a young age, responded to that kind of uh, mentorship, wherein yeah. someone is like, run another lap. Great, but like, drop down and give me 50. And in my older age, I, older age, I'm 30 now. Um, I'm 32. <laughs> cool, cool, cool. Um, I'm sort of like moving away from that energy. And yeah. now I'm more interested in cultivating, you know, a relationship where somebody is maybe a little bit softer because I've spent so much of my life um, seeking out mentors who are really hard on me. And yeah. I was always attracted to that. And now I'm like, maybe that's not the only way to succeed. Yeah. Uh, that being said, I had a trainer in my teenage years who I really who really helped me. And also I, my Hebrew teacher in Hebrew school um, was a great guide for me in my teenage years, but I never had an acting mentor. Mm. And do you think that athleticism experience is what stopped you from becoming disillusioned with the drama teacher? Yeah, I also think that, yeah, I think that I think that I have thick skin. Yeah. Um, you know, I was doing a panel yesterday for USC with Paul Vig, our producer and yeah. our showrunner and some of the cast. And Paul was talking about to be able to succeed in this business, you have to be sensitive enough to be able to be vulnerable publicly, but you also have to have really thick skin. And I, and I was yeah. like, oh, that really describes me well, wherein I'm very sensitive, big crybaby, but I'm also resilient and if I can call myself brave, I think I'm also Yeah, brave. you are. You're an artist and yeah. I'm proud of you. And, and I'm curious then because you did school in the East Coast for like one year, right? Mm -hmm. What made you decide to, you know, obviously you're like, you know, as your mom kind of even mentioned, LA is so close and that is just such a bubble to business. Was there a reason that you were kind of drawn to, to moving away further? I look back at my teenage years and I don't think anything had like a great conscious uh, strategy. You yeah. know, I was just a kid trying to figure out my life. Um, so when it came to college, I remember really not wanting to go. I don't like school. Um, yeah. It's not something I'm proud of. I think people, who like school are cooler than me, but I just, I don't like the classroom setting. I don't like being treated like everybody else. I feel like human beings are very unique and individual and we have different ways of learning and interests. And at, in school, I just feel like, a, you know, a, sh a, a sheep. Yeah, I, I really do understand that. I had that, I dropped out myself, so. Uh, then talk to me, you know, because you went to Adler, right? Right. So I went to I, I went to a liberal arts college because I had no idea what I was doing, and it was a school where they said that they would let me play soccer on their Division three soccer team. So I was like, I'll do that because yeah. I've, I've spent so much time and energy focusing on athleticism. That'll give me a focus. I went. I hated it. I couldn't sleep at night. I wasn't inspired. And I remember coming home after my freshman year and telling my parents, like, why are we spending all this money on this thing that I don't feel like I'm utilizing? It doesn't bring me joy. It actually is the con brings me the contrary. It brings me depression. Yeah. And I went to Europe that summer with a girlfriend. And when I was gone, I was just thinking about what it is that I do love and what it is that inspires me in life. And it, it's always been acting. Yeah. Even though I never pursued it that seriously, it's just something that I deeply love. It's yeah. a, a love of mine. And so I was like, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm, I was 18 at the time. And I was like, it's not too late. I, I really want to just try. And 
I came home from that trip. I told my parents I was dropping out of college. They were disappointed, but supportive. And, and, you know, not suspicious, but didn't seem like they believed that I could make it quote unquote. As, as every parent kind of has in the back of their mind, you know? Yeah. yeah. Totally. So, but I was like, I'm not going to move to LA. I'm going to do the responsible thing and I'm going to go to theater school because there's so much I don't know. And I auditioned for Juilliard, Strasburg, Stella Adler. Yeah, in New York. I don't remember where else, but I, I went to Strasburg. <laughs> oh, cool. Yeah, yeah. Adler was right down. So you got in there, right? Yeah, I think I got into all the places I auditioned for, which is funny because I had no idea what I was doing. I even brought my for my Adler audition I think I had a Shakespeare monologue which is I just cringe thinking about what it was and I don't remember I have a bad memory <laughs> I was holding the 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 lines the monologue in my hand and the administrator after the audition was like just so you know you should never do that on an audition and I was like okay anyways I went there and I had the best time yeah because was conservatory train? Uh, you mentioned theater school, but the conservatory in approach was that impar- imperative to you? Kind of like circling back to the athleticism of like going in, focusing on this for you know eight hours a day, three to five days a week. Like yeah, it makes me want to take back what I said about not liking school because maybe I just don't like studying subjects. But you don't, yeah, interested. things that you are going to end up forgetting. I I think we all agree on that. And yeah, so I loved, I loved, 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 loved my time at Stella Adler. And did you have like a good class? Because that can make or break your experience. Loved my class, loved my teachers. I loved learning about the history of theater. I loved reading plays. I loved being in New York City and being, you know, confronted with humanity every day on the subway or walking down the street and it's such a diverse city and it's such an alive city and you can go see theater and you know it was just so it was so formative for me as a young artist and as a curious person it's New York is I think just such a wonderful place to be yeah 12 years here I totally agree I'm curious though you know when when you started kind of getting in and excelling and liking your environment, I don't, I, you know, I don't know what your idea of, of quote making it was before, but did you feel like this imperative to do Broadway or were you still kind of open to film TV or just acting? I, instinctually, I just always felt that on camera acting was where I would excel. Yeah. Um, I do think that, this is a blanket statement, but I do think that actors with theater training are generally more expansive yeah. um, on camera. I understand what you mean. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm curious then, you know, while you were there, at least Strasburg had this rule that you, you can audition. Were you able to sneak in auditions or were you not doing that while you were there? I wasn't doing that. However, when we did our showcase, we, you know, a couple weeks before sent out our headshots and our resumes that my resume was like, I played Agnes in Agnes of God Yeah. Uh, in theater school. You know, like my resume was a joke, but I had a really good headshot and a manager called me in while I was still in school and said, I want to send you on auditions. And I booked jobs very quickly. He ended up signing me. And so I had him by the end of school. And then I I ended up booking my first film, a leading role in a film a month after acting school. Yeah, that's amazing. How did that, how did, how did that feel for not only you, but like telling your parents, like, was that, I mean, it must've felt insane. Yeah, there's two sides of me. There's one side of me that is very confident and assured and 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 also just so ambitious and 
won't take no for an answer. And then there's another part of me that's just like has the imposter syndrome and is constantly like, me, are you sure? So I remember walking down the street when I was in acting school and I don't really necessarily believe in God or I'm not really sure what my relationship with faith is. I've never explored that in my life. Yeah. But I remember walking down the street in New York and saying like, please God, please, there's nothing I want more than to be an actor. And so when I got that job, I remember being at the same time surprised, me, are yeah. you sure, why? And then there was another part of me that was like, I knew it. Yeah, it's always twofold, you know, because yeah. we're actors. That's amazing though. Is that manager someone you're still with or? I'm not. Yeah, but that's how it goes, that's beautiful. And then talk, talk to me when you were on that first set, did you, you know, having that amalgamation of terror and self-belief, were you, you know, was every day like fun or was it terrifying? Well, I ended up not doing that job because I got another job. So that job was the lead of a movie where Melanie Linsky, who I later worked with on Castle Rock and I don't feel at home in this world anymore and has become a great friend of mine. She was going to play my mom, which is crazy because I think she's 12 years older than me or something but wow. um, and you know I was 20 at the time so I was playing a 16 year old and she was supposed to be a young mother anyways I didn't end up doing the job because I got shameless and I remember yeah. my agents at the time you did so I got like agent. four episodes right or I think so yeah I don't remember. um five maybe yeah five I read you. I read your IMDb. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> How is that experience? You know, I mean, going in with, with Emmy and William H. Macy, I mean, just like, so, and that show, you know, early on was just such a, such a hit. Yeah. Well, I had never seen a film set before. Wow. I had never, ever, I'd never done a commercial. I had never done a, even a student film. I have, I had never been on camera in any professional what? way. Not even at Adler, they didn't do the camera. I guess it's theater school. Wow. Yeah. So I, and I was 20 and I was eager and prepared. Yeah. But I was also a fish out of water and I wish I could remember the director of the first episode because he was so supportive and definitely saw my fear, but also saw my capabilities. And, oh, that's my cat. I don't know where he came from. And I remember him just being like, go Jane, you got it. Yep, yeah. try this, try that, you got it. And and I, I even remember him like applauding me. It was such a sweet, lovely experience and all the cast was so welcoming. And you know, we, we, you, that show they would shoot in LA but then they would go to Chicago once For or twice. For the exteriors, and, yeah. And so when we went to Chicago, everybody welcomed me like I was part of the family. And then I left that show because I ended up getting suburgatory and they hired Emma Greenwell to just take my spot and play the character that I was uh, playing. Wow. Yeah. So you started crushing it out the gate. I crushed it out the gate. And yeah. then I had some years where I did not crush it. Yeah. And I was convinced that, it, you know, it was all over. And then yeah. now I'm on this upswing with Zoe's. But, you know, I was, yeah, I, the stars were aligned and I was incredibly lucky right out of acting school. Well, that's a, yeah, I mean, justice prevails. You're a great actress. I'm curious, though, you know, because, like, I, I love him and... What was it like working with Jeremy Sisto? And like, I think you got 54 episodes out of Suburgatory. It was like a, a long run, right? Yeah, that was such a fun show. Do you feel like that was a... your film school? Like that, that whole long run? Like, do you feel Definitely. like that was the one where you've, you found your voice, you know how a set works. Like at that point you felt really confident and, you know, just being present on a set and working with actors of varying calibers. Absolutely. Amazing. Yeah, I think that the more, you know, acting is a funny job where all jobs you have to be employed, but 
with our job, you can't really do it alone. You know, like my boyfriend's an artist and he has a studio space and he goes to a studio every day and he makes a sculpture or painting. As an actor, you are always waiting for someone to tell you when you can actually do your art. Yeah. Um, which is why I actually still go to class because I think keeping up your craft and practicing and having a community where you can act when you're not employed is yeah. is really important. And I am someone who gets rusty really quickly. Yeah. If I don't work for a couple months, the first day back, I'm like, I don't know how to do this. I yeah. can't, you know, I, I feel so self-conscious. And so working on Suburgatory was such a gift because just hours and hours and hours and hours and hours in front of the camera, like I said, I think one of the most important things for an actor is to not be self-conscious and to be able to be private publicly. And so if you're doing that for many hours a day, it becomes easier and easier. Totally. And at that point, did the show force you to move to LA? Is that when you made the move? I actually moved to LA right after school. So um, when I got when when I got that job, um, it was supposed to be, it was the the movie was called Eye of the Hurricane. I think Nicola Nicola Peltz ended up. Oh, her. she's a she's a very close friend. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah. She she did that job with Melanie that I didn't do because of Shameless. Anyways, I had moved to LA already at that point. Wow, that's a, and did you you know going from this you know twenty four hour intensity city? Did you do you feel like you responded to LA and the kind of spread out traffic? Everyone's an actor. Like, was that a hard thing for you to adjust to? Yeah, it was hard. It took three years for me to feel at home in LA and wow. to feel like I had a real group of friends and to even really feel like I liked it. It took a while. LA is a hard city to adjust to, for sure. Yeah, yeah. I made it six months. <laughs> That's I mean, amazing. I've been here now 10 years, so it's, it's definitely my home, but it takes a while. What what talk to me about the Evil Dead reboot? How was that experience? Because like that, totally wise is so different than a Shameless or Suburgatory. Was that something that you were excited to do, or was that kind of a terrifying endeavor? I was really excited. I read the script and I remember just hooting and hollering. Basically, I was like, "This is so fun! This is so outrageous!" I absolutely want to do something this freaky. And I was very uh, pushy with my agents. And they were like, okay, are you sure you want to do something like that? And I was like, absolutely. Yeah. And Lily Collins, I think oh. I, I think I emailed my agents when Lily Collins was attached to Star and I was like, can I play any other part? Yeah. And they were like, oh, let's look into it. And then they wrote back and they were like, well, Lily Collins actually just dropped out. So do you want to audition for that part? And I was like, yes. Yes. <laughs> and I went in and I had to pretend to be the devil in my audition. And I remember calling my agents after the audition and telling them to tell the casting director that I was sorry. <laughs> yeah, because that you know, that's like it's it's like, you know, like in Borat when you see people speaking in tongues, like you really have to commit to that and at the cost of humiliating yourself. And right. How, and they were did, like, what is she talking about? She <laughs> about no way. That's always yeah. how it goes. The yeah. ones you think you crush, you don't get, and the ones that you're like, Well, I'm never showing my face in that office again, you book. <laughs> I know. Isn't that crazy? That really does happen. Yeah. That's amazing then. How was that experience filming that movie? You know, let alone, you know, that, that film is, you know, in a Comic-Con way, has such a rabid fan base of the original. Yeah. Was it overwhelming? Like, were you aware of that kind of, you know, fanboy culture that this was going to be a remake? And was it, did that kind of factor into like, uh, or, not, or not really? No, I am, I don't. I think something happens to me in some sort of survival mechanism switch when I'm working. I don't think about the fact that it'll actually be seen by the yeah. public. I just can't, I can't, like, I have to compartmentalize somehow. And it, I, I don't think about how it's going to be received until I'm actually done shooting it. Yeah. But it was an awful experience because 
I am not an actor who, you know, goes to work and does some awful scene and goes home and has a drink and says hi to their family and sleeps well at night. I am deeply affected by the work that I do. Yeah. So spending six months, it was a 75 day shoot, which is a really long shoot for yeah. a movie. And because of all the effects or in yeah, it yeah. was we, we did all practical effects for the movie and it was just awful. It's awful to 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 pretend to get raped, to oh. run and scream for your life, to get buried alive, yeah. actually, to you know, pretend rip your arm off, all night shoots, alone with blood rain, freezing cold in the winter, like yeah. crawling through mud. All of that is not fun. I thought yeah. it was gonna be fun, not fun. Yeah, you, you... <laughs> I'm ultimately really proud of the work, but it fucked me up. Like, I, 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 you know, there's famous stories about actresses and horror films being tormented by directors or yeah. just tormented by the work that they have to do. And for me, it absolutely affected me that way. And, you know, I've, I've tried to separate, but, you know, I don't really understand how, if you, if you're really experiencing something, which I think is the best acting, how your body and mind is supposed to know that it's pretend, you yeah. know, like, of course I know it's pretend and I, I don't think I'm actually possessed, but my nervous system is like, yeah. ouch, stop. <laughs> you know, like I need recovery and hugs and love. And oh. it's hard to balance that in a horror film. Yeah, I'm so sorry. Yeah, I know. I know what I, I always go for very dark characters. So I know how the work can go home with you. Did it, did it take up a little while for you to recover from that? Like the filming and just kind of, I guess, come back to yourself, you know, was that a journey? Yeah. I mean, for me, it's always like sleep Yeah. where when I'm, when you're working so many hours a day and you don't see the sun anymore because you're doing night shoots or you're in a studio and for me, it's usually not that hard to come back to myself after the filming is over. It's like a week of sleep with my boyfriend, home cooked meals. I'm, I'm fine. Yeah. I bounce back. But it's more like during the shooting that your just nervous system never gets a br break and you never get a full rest. And so yeah. you're just like running on empty, you know, and then you go back to work and you scream and cry and you scream and cry and then you go home and you're like, am I okay? <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's amazing though. Thank you for sharing that. I'm curious, you know, as that film comes out and was successful, I imagine at this point you're, you're in a place in your career where you can, you can be choosy. You know, did, did that, you know, having some leverage, did that start to differentiate what you were interested in, you know, or, or did, was that not the case yet? That's always changing. I don't feel like I have leverage. I probably have more leverage than I think that I do, but it's, it's a constant struggle with, with this business, you know, yeah. like I can't just choose what I do. I can yeah. choose to say no, which I, I do exercise that right. Yeah. But I can't really just like find a script that I love and be like, I'm going to go do this with Meryl Streep. <laughs> yeah. It doesn't work that yeah. way. Yeah. Um, but what I want to work on is, is always changing. Yeah. So something of, like about Alex, was that something because tonally that's so different from you know, evil, dead, like, was that, and, and, you know, this isn't revealing anything, but like, it deals with suicide, you know, was that something that you're interested in exploring as a character and as an artist? Yeah, I mean, when About Alex came along, what I was really attracted to was the ensemble cast. Yeah, amazing. A lot of great actors in that movie. Nate Parker, Max Greenfield, I mean, too many to name. Jason Ritter, Aubrey Plum. Yeah. Uh, Max Minghella. Yeah, I love Max. It was really fun to work with all of those great actors. Yeah. Makes you want to be better when you work with great actors, you know? Totally. And I'm, I'm curious, you know, then at, at that point, you know, what, what was coming your way where, you know, because I guess around 2014, I would say is like, yeah, it kind of happened in maybe 2012, but like 2014 is really when I think the streaming became the thing 
that it's, you know, evolved into now, you know, mm-hmm. like, like other networks that didn't have content, like, I don't know, you know, app, you, well, Apple came much later, but you know, they started to really invest in, in streaming services and original content and Amazon, Netflix, HBO, you know, w- was television something you were interested in again, having done that for so long, or did you want to stay in movies? I think at the time I wanted to stay in movies um, because I had just done three years of television. Yeah. And, um, you know, they're very different for many reasons. And one being that a movie has a beginning and an end in an hour to an hour and a half to yeah. just three hours. And um, television, serialized TV, you tell like the first chapter and the pilot, and then you have the middle section that can span over 10, 20, 50, 70 hours. And yeah. then you have the finale episode and then you get <laughs> closer. Um, and so it's just different forms of storytelling and going to shoot a movie for a month or two months or three months was really attractive to me after, you know, going to the same set every day for seven months in a row. Yeah, yeah. And mm-hmm. now I... I love both. I love both television and film. And also now TV is becoming more filmic in that yeah. there's limited series. So there is a 10 hours. You know what the whole show is going to be before you shoot it. And then there's an end. Like Castle Rock or something. You exactly. know, yeah. it's amazing. Uh, I got to ask is like, I'm such a big fan of his and I look up to him so much. What, what was it like working with Megan Blair? on that film oh my god the best he's one of the best he is god i i'm a virgin i grew up in virginia so i just oh, like cool. yeah it's like a hometown hero and i've been meaning to get him on the show but oh man i just him and jeremy like their work i like blue ruin oh it's one of my favorite films was that a wonderful experience one of the best macon is a hero of mine as well he is such a good actor. Yeah. Such an amazing writer, an incredible director. He's so smart, he's so considerate, inclusive, thoughtful, creative, fun, funny. Um, we all from I Don't Feel at Home in This World anymore are still on a text thread. Throughout. Oh, that's amazing. Yeah, and throughout all the past months, we've just been checking in with each other and I am so proud of that movie. It is so good. It's amazing. Yeah. Macon, Macon's not had a, a dud yet, you know? Say that again? He, Macon has never had a dud yet, you know? And it, I, I love that about him. You know, he, he takes his time, and when he does something, he gives it his all instead of, you know, a lot of people like winning Sundance or going to Cannes could like take 30 scripts and, you know, just want to work and not make good things. So... I have the utmost respect for someone who's like, no, I, I want to do my thing. Me too. Well, I'm curious then, you know, with, with that film, something like Castle Rock, circling back to that, you know, knowing that that was a limited series and obviously, you know, Stephen King, was that something that made you kind of like, yeah, I'll do this because it's not going to be five seasons in the next 10 years of my life. Yeah, I was so excited to be a part of Castle Rock. The writing is so good. Um, the actors are yeah. incredible. Andre Holland and Melanie Linsky leading a show is like the best. Andre actor. works out at my gym and we talk about this all the time. And he's just so humble. He's he's like, he's like, how, how do you know who I am? I was like, dude, you're the best. <laughs> yeah, he's great. Yeah. And also to be able to play Jack Torrance's niece was so cool. And there was a lot of discussions before the season started about this character possibly coming back in future seasons. And that was really um, interesting to me. I hope that that can still happen with my Zoe land yeah. schedule. Um, I'm not sure, but I got to play the town taxi driver, self-proclaimed um, historian of yeah. Castle Rock and I think I'm trying to remember the character description but I think it was Tracy Flick meets Ed Gain and I was like wow. there's nothing that 
could talk about my singular taste more yeah. clearly than that sentence. I Election is one of my favorite movies of all time. I've always yeah. wanted to play a character like Tracy Flick and then Ed Gain. I'm obsessed with morbidity and of course <laughs> <laughs> we all are. <laughs> yeah. So I was I was so excited to be a part of that. And and because you've had such an amazing career and so diverse, I'm curious, you know, you mentioned before that you were, you know, you still do classes. Do you work with a coach on auditions? I have a coach. Her name is Megan McGarry, and I met her in acting class. Um, there is a teacher named Tony Greco who teaches in both New York and Los Angeles. And I was in his class and I watched Megan work and she is a spectacular actress. Wow. And then I found out that she also coached and um, our relationship has developed over the last two and a half years. And now she is on set with me. So yeah. during Zoe's, she was there during the pilot with me. And then she was there for episode two and then from episode eight to 12. Wow. And, and then let's, let's dig into what we're here to talk about. You know, I, before I, I ask, like, is music and singing always been an integral part of your life? No. <laughs> <laughs> really? No. I mean, wow. I love music and I love dancing, but I don't know much about music. I don't know anything about musical theater. Yeah. I am not a trained singer or dancer. So that was a big reason why I wanted to do Zoe's is because... I was attracted to learning a new skill and learning a new form of expression and singing and dancing. I love that. That's so beautiful and so brave. Uh, talk to me about how it came your way. You know, was that something that that just came as an offer, or did you hear the rumblings of it and audition for? You know, because there's a lot of female characters on that show. Talk yeah, to me about I, the I remember reading about it when it got picked up for a, a, to be a produced pilot. And at the time, Paul Feig was attached to direct. And I remember noticing it and thinking, hmm, I wanna be in that. Yeah. And then it, I was offered the part and Paul Feig was no longer going to direct it, but he's producing it and he's been a wonderful producer. And Richard Shepard signed on to direct, who directed the pilot of Ugly Betty and is, such an incredible person and I'm so grateful for him. The show would not exist without him. This character would not exist without him. But uh, it was offered to me. I hadn't done network television since Suburgatory. I did a pilot for CBS in 2016 because I've been the lead of projects on network. Yeah. Position where they offer me parts, which is crazy. I'm like, how do you, <laughs> if I was a show You deserved I, it. You built it uh, up. I don't yeah, I know. Yeah. Imagine being a showrunner and being like, I'm just going to take the risk and offer it, this person and hope that they can carry my entire show, my baby that I've been working on for years and years. You're an amazing actress, Shane. You deserve it. You, Thank and, you. you know, don't ever, don't ever doubt that. It's justice. You're, you're, you're so beautiful inside and out, and it's so fun watching you work. So when that eventually came your way, was that, you know, having not sung and things like that, did, did that terrify you or that excited you, it sounds like? It excited me. You know, in the pilot, Zoe doesn't partake in the music, musicality part of the show, yeah. but there was discussions that eventually she would probably, to what extent, we didn't know. And then after we shot the pilot, which was such a magical experience, we all got along so quickly everything clicked creatively. We were all on the same page. It was so fun. And then I, I went to Austin. I said, I really want to be a part of the singing and dancing. And he said, okay, I have this idea for episode eight where you sing and dance. Every yeah, your, your huge number. It's, that, it's amazing. You know, that, that was the mid season point, right? It was only like yeah, five yeah, more. Towards the end, yeah. 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 And yeah, it's an amazing episode. That's so rad. I'm, how was that experience, you know, going from, you know, witnessing all these musical numbers to then having to be in it, in the lead of it. I think in some ways I've been waiting for this moment my whole life. Ever since I was that kindergartner to asking my mom, can you get me an agent? This is like, you know, there's no, uh, there's no 
taking up space, like singing and dancing. And yeah. there's no like owning that you want to be a performer if you're going to sing and dance. And so for me, it was like the, what I've been working towards my entire career, I felt like. And it was so, it was terrifying. I, I you know, I was working 16 to 18 hours a day leading up to that episode so just to prepare for yeah. six musical numbers no other cast member has to do more than one an episode if that yeah and so for me to have to do six and prepare for that while working the way i was working i was just so scared that i wasn't gonna be able to pull it off but did you work with a, a vocal coach or did they have one on set already i worked with a vocal coach his name is eric vitro he's incredible and mandy is one of the best collaborators I've ever worked with and we took three days off of production and I learned all the numbers and I pre-recorded the songs and then when it was time to go I was like it was just so <laughs> gratifying fun um it was thrilling really yeah I can only imagine I I you know I know we spoke about this on Shameless that you know, exteriors and interiors, but like in a weird way, because it takes place in San Francisco, did it feel just like being right away from your, your home all of a sudden and all these, you know, huge outdoor musical numbers? Did that just feel insane? Yeah, so we shot in Vancouver, but we did get to go to San Francisco and shoot exteriors for two days on the pilot. And it felt like a warped dream because my cousin is a professional dancer in San Francisco. And so Mandy was looking for dancers and I recommended my cousin. And then he recommended his um, dance company. So around me in the help musical number in the pilot were my cousin, all of the people who were at my cousin's wedding. My mom like drove over from San Francisco, from Sonoma and she was just like on a, a, a porch watching us film. My brother, his office was two blocks away from where we were filming. So he walked over. So it was like, I was working, but I was in my hometown and my mom was right there and my wow. cousin was right there. And I was like, this feels so kismet. And I was like, I feel like I'm exactly, exactly where I'm supposed to be. And it was one of the funnest filming experiences I've ever had. That's so beautiful. And the way it comes full circle. I'm curious, you know, with, with having so many numbers, even when you weren't in them, is there a lot of rehearsal for the other actors? And yeah. even the guest star co-stars that, you know, you walk by and you hear one lyric, are they singing that as well? Yeah. I mean, it's, there's a very, there's varied levels of experience when it comes to singing and dancing in our cast. So some, some numbers, some actors had eight rehearsals for a number. Sometimes you'd have three, sometimes you'd only have one. For me, I don't go to the rehearsals for any of the dance numbers because like I said, I was all shooting. So on the day I would, Mandy and Jillian and Jeff, her associates would come and we'd rehearse the number and I'd see it for my first time and they'd be like, this is your path. Wow. And then I would like walk the path. But yeah, all the guest stars sing and it's really amazing to um, witness such yeah. talent. And, and you have like a legend like Skylar, you know, who did so many musicals, you yeah. know, that's so cool. I love that. And, and you guys got season two. Yeah, I'm really excited. Yeah, that's so fun. And, and yeah, I mean, you know, nobody knows when yeah. and how, but when it happens, I'm really excited. That's amazing. We're just you're so amazing as that character, and I I, I can just see how much you give to it, and it really shows. And I have immense gratitude for for giving yourself like that because it's it's not an easy thing to do or sustain. And uh, I'm so curious, you know, what, what, what's next for you? Do you have any other projects in the can? No, you know, everything is shut down. Yeah. And when we can go back to work, it'll be Zoe's. And so that'll probably last seven, eight months because the shooting schedules changed now because of COVID and yeah all of that is developing every day and changing every day. So right now, I think I'm, you know, like everyone, we're just sort of, on, I'm on pause. Yeah. Are you, are you able to stay inspired throughout this madness, you know, as, 
as an artist, you know, it's, or as a human even, you know, it's so tough. I'm trying not to put any pressure on myself to be productive in any way, even when it comes to artistry. And I have sort of committed to taking this time to rest as much yeah. as possible and to reflect and to just take care of myself and my family and my loved ones because it's really anxious, uncertain time. Yeah. And I, I'm not sure it would be helpful to try to um, hold myself to a standard that was, you know, that hold myself to the standard before we were living through a pandemic. Yeah. I'm just trying to be like really gentle and because I, I you know, I'm scared all the time and I feel yeah. really sad and I really miss life and I miss my friends and I miss my family. And I think it takes, at least for me, it takes so much energy to feel okay Yeah, that I'm like, I'm going to honor that and nothing more. That's beautiful. I love that. And I echo that completely. And, you know, final question for the, you know, for all the young Janes out there that, you know, are at a college they don't like and, you know, have this interest in pursuing this thing and there's no map, like any advice for them? Yeah, really get to know yourself as much as you can be curious about yourself and your your unique gifts your unique faults everything about you you can use as an actor in a really beautiful eventually i think even cathartic way and if you know yourself really well you can navigate you know, spaces that are scary. You can really bring out specificity and characters. You can be honest with yourself about whether you actually want something or whether you would be good at something. I think that spending, like, uh, the at least for me, like, my work as an artist, as an actor, is very intertwined with, like, um, my work with myself as a human being because eventually the work is just about displaying humanity, honestly. And so I think we have to know ourselves and the things about ourselves that we're ashamed of are often really, really, really amazing tools for your acting. Um, yeah. That's just, beautiful. Yeah. Amazing. Well, Jane Levy, thank you so much for coming on. I, I really appreciate all your openness and honesty and, it was an amazing episode. And, you know, when season two does, I'd, I'd love to have you back. And um, I'm rooting for you. You know, Thank you're, you so much. yeah, you're, you're amazing. And just keep doing what you're doing. It's so inspiring. Appreciate that. Yeah. Well, I'm sending you so much love. Stay positive, stay healthy. And, and uh, I hope we get to do this again soon. Me too. Take All right. care. Much love.